Okay, so I say SOAP UI. You get SOAP UI dot org. Right. So here in downloads, uh, you can get SOAP UI, SOAP UI Pro, uh, and uh, you uh, when you download SOAP UI Pro, it automatically downloads the SOAP UI trial. That means uh, it downloads the trial version first, which you can extend in case you buy a license. So I have uh, I have just uh, uh, downloaded this uh, uh, installation file on my machine. So you can just click on download SOAP UI and it will show you the various configurations which are applicable for uh, your machine. You can just take that and download. So mine, I think uh, this, this will work fine. So when you click on this, a uh, exe file gets downloaded and uh, that exe file will, uh, will automatically <coughs> self-extract and start installation once you double click on it. Okay. So the one CXE file is downloaded, uh, installing it is just a few steps which you can follow with the wizard. Um, once you install SOAP UI, you will get an icon like this which says uh, SOAP UI 4.5.1. This is the latest version. So once you install, once the installation is complete, it will take about 10-15 minutes. So I just thought I will save some time. So once you have installed, you will get this link, uh, sorry, you will get this uh, desktop icon and if it is SOAP UI Pro, it is going to look like this. So I am going to just open SOAP UI now. Okay, yeah, it's opening up. Uh, the first time it is a little slow, uh, so excuse that please mm, yeah so you see that the soap UI uh, window is a very simple window uh, no sometimes the first time you open it it might take it might take some time to open so that is uh, basically dependent upon the system also uh, so yes uh, the SOAP UI uh, window will look something like this. It is uh, a very straightforward, uh, simple to understand window. So uh, like all other uh, newly installed uh, uh, IDs like Eclipse or NetBeans um, or uh, QTP, hmm. SOAP UI also has a start page which loads up once it is installed. Hmm. It, SOAP UI has a very good uh, uh, forum and very good uh, documentation support which you can use uh, while uh, uh, trying to uh, practice SOAP UI also. So this UI is going to be a little new for uh, um, a few of us who are uh, new to automation in the first place. Uh, so let us see what are the steps you should follow if you want to test a SOAP based web service. Okay. Right now we are concentrating on testing our own SOAP based web service which we just created. Okay. 
So the we installed, we got the icon on the desktop, we double click, SOAP UI opened. We have just stopped there. Now the basics. Right? First let me tell you the prerequisite to test a SOAP based web service using SOAP UI. Okay? So let us see what are the prerequisites first. First and foremost, you should have installed SOAP UI, very obvious. Second, you should have the WSDL file URL of the web service that you are trying to test. If it is a SOAP based web service, you should have a WSDL file URL of that web service that you are trying to test. Okay. So once you have this WSDL file URL that you are trying to test, then you are ready to use SOAP UI. Now, inside our first project, what happens? Right? Okay. Once you have decided that yes, I am going to test my web service using SOAP UI, I have uh, the WSDL URL, you open SOAP UI, then you go ahead and first create a workspace. Okay? Right? You create a workspace. A workspace is nothing but, it is again a XML file which will have details of all your projects that you create under it. Right? Right. So let us go and create a new workspace now. Okay, so let us go and create a new workspace now. File, new workspace. I am uh, keeping the screen for a second or two so that everyone uh, can see. File, new workspace. I click and here you can give a very um, relevant name which you uh, feel is uh, apt for your uh, uh, testing that you are doing right now. I am going to say soap underscore services. Right? I'm going to say OK. So this workspace is a simple uh, XML file. Uh, like you can see here, a SOAP UI workspace is a simple .xml file which will have details of multiple projects provided you create those projects under this workspace. Right? So I'm just saving it. It gets saved as a .xml file. So now you see here we have the workspace created. Step 1 done. So step 2. Create a project under the workspace. Again your project is a xml file. Right. Let us do that. File new SOAP UI project. So file new SOAP UI project, it automatically creates in the workspace that is right now loaded in SOAP UI. So I say file new SOAP UI project. Right? It is going to ask me for two things here. This is here is where we have to concentrate. It is going to ask you for two things. One is the project name. Another one is the location to the WSDL file. Okay? Two inputs, project name, location to the WSDL file, right? That is why I said the prerequisite is you should have the WSDL file of the web service, a WSDL file URL of the web service for which you are going to do the testing right now, okay? So now my WSDL file URL is here which which is the WSDL file URL of the web service which we created yesterday. Okay. I copied that. Now I am coming back to SOAP UI. I am giving my project a name. 
I'm going to call it as calculator service. Service, right? And I paste this URL here. I'm repeating it again. All that I did was I right click uh, or I can say control V. I paste the URL here, right? So what happens is, till now we have just created a workspace which is an XML file. Workspace is nothing but it is going to be a collection of uh, multiple projects which are, which are going to get created under it. And now we have created a project. We are just in the progress of creating a project. For creating a project, you need the project name followed by the visual file URL of your website. Right now, I'm not doing anything. I'm just giving this URL. I'm not fiddling with anything here. I am just leaving it with the default checkbox and I'm saying OK. Right? So now, if you see here, our project got created and there are, there are a couple of things that you should notice here. One thing is, it automatically got the name of my uh, web service which I had given in the URL. I had given in the URL called as Calci and it is binded to my Tomcat port. Uh, if you need to know more de details about this, you can just uh, copy it till the name of the service and hit enter. So it says my service name is Calci service. My port number is port name is Calci port, and the address in which it is deployed is this, and the visual file is located in this URL, right? So now I am just going to go back to SOAP UI. You see here it it has taken the name of the implementation I have done, and under that, if you see in the Eclipse. Uh, code that we did yesterday, we had only two functions for our uh, web service, that is for our calculator. One is add, another one is sub. I'm just showing that now. One is add, another one is sub, right? So now, if you see here, you have those two functions uh, noted here and if I click on this plus, it shows me the SOAP request for these two functions. A SOAP request is nothing but it is the carrier of XML data which will trigger the web service and give us the output. Right? We will understand more about SOAP request tomorrow in tomorrow sorry in the next session. You will see that how a SOAP a request structure helps you to communicate with a web service using XML. Right? So now, we have seen that the moment you give the visual file URL, it will take the name of your visual file. It will automatically list down the uh, methods inside your web service along with the SOAP request corresponding to that particular uh, function in your web service. Now, we, are, we have not yet reached to the testing point. We have just created a simple uh, project now. We have informed what is the visual file that we will be using. Now, step three, create a test suit. Okay, again, your test suit is going to be based upon your project details, which, which got the, created just now. So, to create a test suit, all that you have to do is right click, right? And here you, uh, you say generate test suit. Right click on your project, uh, sorry, right click on your uh, web service uh, call that is created under your project and say generate test suit, right? I'm just saying generate test suit. Now, generate test suit. So I'm not doing anything with these options for now. I'm just leaving these options as it is. I am just going to follow the default settings and I'm going to say okay the default setting says for each of the operations in that web service one test case will be created and 
I am considering both the operations or functions.